<笑>そうそう、ありますね。OK <笑>。OK、uh,。It is my great pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Tatsuhiko Miura. Tatsuhiko Miura is a very,、uh, very promising、uh, young analyst who took the degree. A、PhD in 2018 at the University of Tokyo. After that, he spent several three years in Kyoto University and then moved to, uh, uh, moved to、uh, Hirosaki University in, in the April of this year.、Uh, although he, his, he, his CV、uh, in this seminar did not mention anything about. Prizes, but he actually received a couple of prizes. One of the quite big p r i z e for young scientists uh, from uh, 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 Mass Society of Japan, Tatebe Prize. Okay, and he's a, he's a, he's a specialist. He's a specialist of、uh, thin film approximation of the Navier Stokes equation. And his thesis consists of more than 300 pages and one of the biggest papers. And、uh, today he's going to talk、uh, one of the small p a r t of his big thesis. And、uh, his thesis was forced into published in three papers in the、uh, in, uh, in last several years. And today he's going to talk on thin film limit of the Nabia s t o c k s i c a t i o n in a curved thin domain. Please, Professor Tatsuhiko Miura. Thank you for a kind and detailed introduction. And、uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me、uh, this opportunity to talk in this nice seminar. So, today I will talk on the thin field limit.、Uh, sorry, today、uh, I will talk on the Navier 3D Navier Stokes equations in a curved thin domain, which is、uh, very close to,、uh, to this surface. And I show you、uh, some re- Result on the what happens when the thin domain shrinks to a、uh, 2D cruiser surface for the Navier Stokes equations. So let me start.、Uh, let gamma, oh sorry.、Uh, let gamma be a given 2D cruiser surface in R3. Here, crossed means that uh, uh, this gamma is uh, uh, compact in R3 and with that boundary. And,、uh, A typical example of gamma is,、uh, of course, a sphere,、uh, especially a unit sphere and a torus.、Uh, this is not flat torus, but, but a toroidal surface. For this surface and sufficiently small epsilon, we define our curved thin domain by the set,、uh, by the set of, of all points in R3 with distance from gamma less than、uh, epsilon over 2. So, yeah, when、uh, gamma is a sphere,、uh, unit sphere, then our curved thin domain is、uh, a region between the sphere of radius、uh, 1 minus uh, epsilon, uh, epsilon over 2 and 1 plus epsilon over 2. In this curved thin domain, we, define,、uh, we consider the Navier Stokes equations with Navier slip under conditions、uh, given by this,、uh, given by this, uh, uh, this place. The first two equations here is、uh, are the usually incompressible Navier Stokes equations. And the boundary condition uh, is uh, not, so,、uh, not, not so usual one. Usual, uh, of course, the usual one is the no slip under condition, but here we consider the、uh, Navier slip under condition, which means that in the first, the first condition, the fruit does not go out or、uh, come into through the boundary. In the c u r v e thin domain. And the second,、uh, second condition says that the uh, norm, uh, tangential component of the normal vector, of, uh, sorry, uh, tangential component of the stress vector is equal to zero, which means that fruit,、uh, fruit slips on the boundary without friction. And we also uh, give an、uh, uh, initial condition here. And here,、uh, nu is a、uh, uh, viscosity coefficient, which is a positive number and independent of epsilon. So we may, we may of course, we may consider uh, this uh, uh, coefficient depending on epsilon, but this is another problem, so another、uh, difficult problem. So we don't consider in that case. And we also,、uh, 
Uh, we also write uh, uh, an epsilon unit atom normal vector of uh, the boundary of thin domain, and uh, we also use uh, we also use these uh, notations here. And our aim of uh, uh, this talk is to study the behavior of a solution u epsilon, which is a fluid velocity as epsilon goes to zero. And our final uh, our final goal is to derive limit equations on the limit surface. So this is our aim. And in the uh, in generally uh, in the study of the Navier-Stokes equations in three D thin domains, we have mainly three problems. The first one is the global existence of a strong solution for very large data, depending on epsilon. Because in the in the study of the Navier-Stokes equations in the three D case, we only have the uh, local time existence of a strong solution for arbitrary data or Global, uh, global in time existence of a strong solution for very small data. But in the 2D case, and such a problem does, uh, is already solved, we have a global strong solution for any data. And uh, in our case, thin domains, 3D thin domains are very close to 2D one. So we naturally uh, expect to get global existence of a strong solution for very large data, which of course depending on epsilon. And uh, another problem is uh, other problem is uh, convergence of such a solution u as epsilon goes goes to zero, in some sense. And if we uh, if we can show the convergence of the uh, solution as epsilon goes to zero, then we we also want to characterize the limit of epsilon, especially as a solution to some equation which is called uh, which we usually call limit equations. So these problems are studied by several authors, and the first uh, first work done by uh, Roger and Sale, nineteen ninety three, they consider the uh, flat thin domain with uh, small omega uh, uh, just uh, rectangular. Uh, later, Temam and Siane generalized the work of uh, the results of Roger and Sale to consider uh, general to the bounded domain omega, uh, small omega. So this, but, but this uh, this omega epsilon is uh, totally flat in the sense that the limit uh, limit set is a flat domain, and uh, its outer uh, top and bottom boundaries are also flat. Later, Ftimi, Roger, and Sale and Wang and Wang Sale consider flat thin domain with non-flat top and bottom boundaries, which is given by this formula. So in their case, uh, limit set is. Uh, uh, is a square zero to one to, uh, times zero to one, but uh, in their case, the uh, bottom boundary and top boundary are given by a graph of some function. And also, Temam and Siane studied the Navier Stokes equations in a thin uh, 3D thin spherical shell, which is a region between the unit sphere and the sphere of radius one plus epsilon. So this is only uh, uh, this work is the only uh, only work which consider Navier Stokes equations in a curved thin domain, but uh, th this is some some somewhat simple curved thin domain. And in our case, we consider a curved thin domain around the general closed surface gamma, and the point is our uh, our limit surface has uh, non-constant curvatures, uh, unlike the uh, unlike the sphere studied by Tema Manciane. And this is uh, su such a case is first considered by uh, by myself. And I want to show you the uh, main results of uh, this talk. But uh, to do that, uh, we uh, I have to uh, I have to prepare some notations. So let n be a unit outer normal vector field of the surface. Then we can write our curved thin domain like this form. Which is given by the point of the our surface and the uh, distance, signed distance from the surface in the normal direction. Then, using this uh, using this uh, uh, expression, we define the average in the thin direction of a vector field on the curved thin domain like this. And we also take uh, its uh, tangential component with respect to surface uh, and write uh, m tau u. 
And we also assume that initial data of our uh, thin domain problem, uh, Navier-Stokes equations, uh, satisfies this condition. Uh, this means that our uh, sorry, uh, initial data has uh, H1 and solenoidal vector field. So this is some notations. So uh, and let me uh, let me show our main theorem. Uh, and uh, we, uh, in fact, we uh, have to assume some assumptions on our surface and uh, initial data. Very roughly speaking, this assumption is that uh, if gamma has uh, sphere and some rotationally symmetric surface, then we have to assume that this initial data is orthogonal to orthogonal in L2 space to the uh, such a rotation uh, rotation vectors. But anyway, th th this is a somewhat uh, co com uh, complicated condition. Uh, so we uh, le let me skip this point. But anyway, we suppose that there exists some constant C and uh, independent of epsilon and some constants epsilon one and alpha in, in between uh, zero to one, such that the L1 norm of uh, square of L1 norm of uh, initial data is bounded by c times epsilon to the power minus one plus alpha. So this uh, right hand side grows up as epsilon goes to zero. Sorry, uh, this is. So we we uh, we may take uh, very large initial data h in h one cross. However, we assume that we also assume that there exists a tangential vector field on the surface V0 in L2 class, such that if we take the tangential component of the average in the same direction of the initial data, then this, uh, this averaged tangential component converts to some vector, uh, tangential vector field in weekly in L2 sense. So in this sense, we uh, assume that uh, this initial data is uh, not so large in this graph, in this sense. Under these assumptions, there exists uh, some constant epsilon two, such that for each epsilon uh, between zero to epsilon two, there exists a global strong solution in L2 class, in, in this class to the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, I, I, uh, I give, uh, I recall the Navier-Stokes equations here. Uh, in the uh, in L2 sense. And if we take the normal component of the average in the same direction, then we have the, this convergence, uh, this uh, normal component of the average goes to zero as epsilon goes to uh, zero uh, strongly in this graph. So uh, roughly speaking, if we take the, uh, sorry, the limit, uh, limit of the uh, limit of the average of the our strong solution converges to uh, tangential vector field in some sense. Then uh, we want to show uh, that uh, what is the limit of the tangential component of the, this uh, of this uh, uh, of this average. So the uh, answer is as follows. Moreover. Uh, there exists a tangential vector field uh, in this class, which is a class of Lurey Hope weak solution to the Navier Stokes equations, such that for each fixed uh, time, large T, the tangential component of the average of the strong solution to the 3D problem converges this tangential vector field V weakly in this class in L2 time and H1 space. Moreover, this limit tangential vector field B is a unique weak solution, unique weak uh, uh, weak solution in the class of ray hope weak solution to this equation, NS, uh, NS0. So this is our limit equation on the surface. And here we have some uh, notations. Uh, this uh, this equation is a momentum equation for the tangential uh, fluid velocity, V. 
and this is uh, this is a uh, uh, time derivative and this is a, a covariant derivative on uh, on the surface and this is transition gradient of the surface pressure and we also have here the uh, visc viscous term for the surface uh, navius toxications given by the uh, orthogonal comp uh, orthogonal projection onto the tangent plane of gamma and uh, surface divergence and the uh, surface strain surface strain rate tensor given by these formulas. So this is our uh, main. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, this is our final goal of our papers, or our, uh, basically my uh, my thesis. And let me uh, let me some comments on the uh, let me give outline of the proof of uh, our main result. Uh, as a uh, I showed the main results of uh, uh, my, uh, I, I showed my main results in the previous slide, and in order to in order to in order to obtain that result, it took three parts to it it, it took three papers uh, for me to derive our limit equations. In the first part, uh, so in, in fact we. We we wrote uh, three parts of uh, uh, sorry uh, three papers three part of uh, our studies our study. In first part, in first part uh, we derived uh, many kinds of uh, basic inequalities in curved thin domain, but with explicit dependence of the epsilon, which is a uh, 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 thickness of the uh, curved thin domain, like uh, Soborek found Soborek inequalities, Poincare inequalities, and some uh, many estimates for the Stokes operator, and so on. Using this result, using the result in part, part one, we uh, we proved in part two that uh, there exists a global exist uh, sorry there exists a global in time strong solution to the Navier-Stock 3D Navier-Stock equations and for large data. And moreover, we derived explicit estimates of the strong solution in terms of epsilon. So the, this is uh, this explicit estimates of strong solution is very uh, very important to derive uh, our navier uh, limit limit Navier-Stock equations. And using the uh, results of part one and part two, we actually uh, we finally derived uh, our limit equations, Navier-Stokes uh, limit to surface Navier-Stokes equations by showing that the uh, tangential component of the average of the strong solution U epsilon weakly converges as epsilon goes to zero on on uh, uh, appropriate function space on gamma and to characterize a weak limit as a weak solution to the limit equations. And, the, uh, and these results uh, obtained, originally obtained in my, uh, my doctor thesis. And I, uh, but, but I have to split this, uh, uh, but, but because, uh, uh, because, uh, because because of this, this results takes uh, two long pages. I, uh, I split, uh, I split them into three parts, but uh, still, uh, but still, the three papers are very long. The first uh, first part takes uh, 108 pages. The second one is the shortest, but uh, still have 60, 60 pages. And third part uh, takes uh, 170 pages. In, in, uh, with uh, with some additional uh, additional results, so why uh, why we have to why I have to write so long paper, <laughs> because uh, the first uh, one reason is that we need to re-examine everything in view of dependence of the thickness of uh, thickness of uh, the thin domain epsilon. For example, I, as I said. We have to show the. Uh, we have to determine the dependence of some be, uh, 
every constant in sober hand corner inequalities uh, in the curved thin domain. And we also closely, uh, we also estimate, uh, we also uh, investigate closely uh, that uh, how the constants depend, constants is estimates of the stroke, stokes operator in the curved thin domain, like the H1 and the H2 estimate, uh, sorry, uh, H1 and H2 regularity estimate for the stroke, stokes operator depending on, depends on epsilon. So usually we uh, usually we uh, don't care about the constant of these inequalities, uh, just saying that there exists a constant depending on, uh, on the domain and so, uh, or, and so on. But we have to uh, we have to show the dependence on the uh, domain, especially epsilon of such constants. So we have to do exam re examine everything. And also, uh, you, uh, so we have to calculate everything in our curved thin domain omega, but uh, such calculations are more complicated than the case of flat thin domains because of curvatures of gamma, because of curvatures and its derivatives of gamma. Since we differentiate, very roughly speaking, since we differentiate ux, uh, x is a X is a point of uh, our curved thin domain, which is expressed by like this. And uh, usually we differentiate this vector field u, u epsilon x in x. But in fact, we uh, in fact we differentiate uh, this function with respect to y and r. And when we uh, when we differentiate this part, then we have to differentiate the normal uh, normal uh, vector field n. And the differenti differentiation of normal, uh, normal vector field gives uh, curvatures. And especially on our, on our case, uh, curvatures are non-constant. So the calculations are more and more complicated than the uh, flat thin domains or the thin spherical shell, which shrinks to uh, just unit sphere. So this is why uh, we have to write, I have to write uh, such long papers. But, but but anyway, I I don't uh, I I don't uh, I don't explain details of this part. I just show the outline of the proof of theorem one. So in the first step, as well as before first step, uh, before first step, uh, we of course uh, show the uh, we we of course we have to show the global existence of a strong solution to the three D Navier-Stokes equations. And we also need explicit estimates of the strong solution in terms of epsilon. So this is done in uh, this. These are done in uh, part two by using results of basic results of in, uh, shown in part one. So from from step one to step four are uh, done in our part three. Part three, uh, our paper part three. So if uh, we have a strong solution u epsilon. So this strong solution, of course, uh, is of course a weak solution. So, so this uh, strong solution satisfies weak form in our curved thin domain. Then, as a step one, we take the average in the same direction of this weak form in omega epsilon to derive weak form satisfied by the uh, tangential component of the average in the same direction of a strong solution, which is posed on uh, the limit surface gamma. This is an important point. So I give some remarks uh, from the next slides. After we uh, after we get uh, after we get the uh, weak form of the uh, average of the strong solution, then we show the then we use this weak form to derive energy estimate of the average of the strong solution of this form. And here the point is, uh, so left-hand side is the usual energy estimate form in the uh, usual energy estimate in the study of the Luray hope weak solution to the Navier-Stokes equations. But here it is important that this CT, the bound CT is depending on the uh, uh, fixed time T, but uh, independent of the, independent of epsilon, the thickness of the thin domain. 
So if we have this kind of energy estimate, then uh, we see that this is bounded with this, uh, this uh, family, uh, M tau u epsilon, uh, bounded with respect to epsilon. So we can show the, uh, we can take the uh, subsequence, which I denote u epsilon n, which converges to some vector field v in uh, in uh, in this in this Hilbert uh, Hilbert space, and moreover, we take the uh, limit uh, limit uh, of epsilon goes to zero and the weak form of the average of the strong solution. Then we find that this limit v is actually a weak solution to the our limit equations, limit surface Navier-Stokes equations. And the, uh, at this step, we only have the uh, convergence of a subsequence. However, our limit equations are basically a 2D Navier-Stokes equations. So we can take, uh, we can show, the, uh, as in the case of the flat domain, we can show the uniqueness of a weak solution to the limit equation. Then uh, using this result, we can show that the full sequence of the average of a strong solution converts to V in weak sense. So this is uh, uh, the outline of proof, one, uh, proof of theorem one, and let me give some comments uh, in the step one. In order to take, uh, in order to derive our, uh, uh, in order to derive weak form of the average of a strong solution, we take a, a test function as follows. We take a test, uh, we take a test function. Uh, which is defined on the surf surface vector field, which is tangential and divergence free. So this is in fact the test function for the limit equation. So we want to substitute this equation, uh, this function to the weak form of the 3D Navier-Stokes equations. So we, so we extend this surface vector field constantly in the normal direction of the surface. Then we substitute this extension for the weak form of the 3D Navier-Stokes equations, and then we show that uh, uh, this is a uh, this is a bilinear form for the 3D Navier-Stokes equations. And uh, if we take the uh, average, uh, sorry, uh, this is uh, this this a bilinear form in our curved thin domain is approximated by the uh, by linear form for the limit equations defined on gamma. And also if we, uh, this is a trilinear form it's, uh, uh, corresponding to the nonlinear term in the Navier-Stokes equations. And uh, we can show that, uh, we show that uh, trilinear form in the curved thin domain is uh, approximated by the trilinear form of the limit equation defined on the surface like this. So in order to show these results, the main idea is as follows. For function phi, some, uh, any function phi on uh, some, uh, curved thin domain. So this is uh, our starting point, the integral uh, of, the, of the phi on the curved thin domain. Then we can, uh, we can use uh, uh, change of variance formula uh, to decompose this uh, integral into the integral over the uh, surface and the integral in the normal direction of the surface. And here we have the, some Jacobian uh, associated to this uh, change of variance formula, but this is uh, of order one with, with respect to epsilon. So we may assume that we, we, we may consider this is one. And then we, we have here the average of a function in the normal direction. So we replace this part uh, just by the average in the normal direction of a function. So, the, uh, and we, we, we can get uh, some expression uh, uh, written in terms of the integral of the surface. So this is main idea. But of course, how we, uh, how, but of course, uh, we have to deal with nonlinear, of course, we have to deal with some nonlinear term and also derivatives defined on, on the thin domain. So uh, we can, we cannot, we cannot do uh, explicitly like this. Uh, we have to some, uh, we have to do some calculations, of course. 
And uh, uh, if we consider uh, if we consider functions on gamma uh, surface, so we may uh, one may uh, one may consider the use of local coordinates of gamma in order to uh, in order to in order to, in order to carry out calculations in the flat domains, but uh, such an idea results in terrible calculations in our case because we have to deal with vector fields and also their derivatives. So we, we want to avoid such a calculations. So instead, we use the uh, uh, following formulas to cal uh, cal cal uh, carry out calculations without using local coordinates, but in a fixed coordinate system of R3. And we, uh, in fact, we use these formulas so this is important because uh, be, uh, this is important because we can we can write the derivatives of the average of a function in the fixed coordinate system of R three uh, and uh, especially explicitly we can write the derivatives of the average of a function uh, defined on the curved thin domain. And also, we also have to uh, we also have to calculate the derivatives in uh, derivatives in uh, curved thin domain of the extension of the normal uh, constant extension of the surface vector field. But this is this can be also uh, written explicitly like this form. And here we have the uh, here this W is the shape operator or the second fundamental form of the surface, and P is also uh, orthogonal uh, projection onto the tangential component, uh, tangential tangent plane of gamma. So these explicit formulas help us to calculate everything in omega epsilon or uh, surface gamma without using local coordinates of the surface uh, of the surface gamma. So this is important point. And let me give another uh, another remark on step one. Uh, <clears throat> we uh, we uh, after after long calculations, we have the uh, weak form of the uh, average of the uh, strong solution, like this formula. So the weak form of the average is roughly speaking the weak is the weak form of the limit equations plus some residual term. So we have to show that this residual term is sufficiently small as epsilon goes to zero. And to estimate this residual term, we need to estimate, we need the estimates for the strong solution, u epsilon, uh, more precisely, uh, L infinity in time and uh, H1 in space estimate and L2 in, space, in, in time and H2 in space uh, estimate like this form. So in other words, uh, here and so uh, sorry, and here this alpha comes from the assumption on the initial velocity, u epsilon zero, and this means that uh, and in other words, and uh, in our case we have to if if we want to show the uh, this residual term is sufficiently small, small, the weak solution is weak solution to the three D equations is not sufficient. We have two strong solutions. Uh, we, have, we we need strong solutions, and usually these uh, inequalities, we actually can show that uh, this residual term is bounded by c times epsilon to the power alpha over four, and this of course this is uh, this goes to zero as epsilon goes to zero, and uh, finally we can get the weak form of the limit equations as uh, limit of uh, as epsilon goes to zero. So this is why we need a strong solution. Uh, strong solution to the 3D equations. Not uh, weak solution is not sufficient. And the theorem one was, is, uh, 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 and theorem one is a uh, result on the weak convergence of the average of a strong solution. But uh, in fact, we can show that the strong convergence result more precisely is the uh, estimate for the difference of the two solutions. Uh, to the solution to the original 3D equation or the uh, and the solution to the 2D limit equations like this. And the idea of the proof is uh, simple. Just takes a difference of weak forms of the average of the, the bulk vector fields, bulk 3D solution and the weak solution to the 
a weak form to the limit equations. And then we take the test function this and apply just apply the ground walls in quality to get this kind of uh, energy estimate, difference energy estimate. And the rest of the time, let me uh, show some, com let me give several comments on the limit equations. So I give the limit, our limit equations again uh, with some notations here. And these equations, uh, in, in fact, uh, surface navier stokes equations, uh, because uh, this uh, equation uh, can be written as this form with this S gamma is a stress tensor like this, which is uh, introduced by, first introduced by Businesk and then generalized by Scriven. So this with this surface strain tensor, we can write uh, our limit equation like this, and this is a, so we can show, we can say that this is a surface navier stokes equations. And, uh, uh, and in fact, this kind of equation, this is, uh, this is another form of our limit equations, appear as a part of a special case of the interface, pro interface equations of the two phase flows, uh, or uh, the Navier-Stokes equations on an evolving surface. And we refer to the book of Stratisag's or on the paper by Bote and Proust for the uh, details of the interface, uh, sorry, uh, the two phase flows. And also, we defer to the works by Koba Liu Giga and Jan Kun Olszewski Roskem for the Navier Stokes equations in, on an evolving surface. And we, we uh, I want to uh, say that this limit, uh, I want to have some uh, thing uh, about the limit equations. Uh, this is again, again, this is uh, our limit equations. And this equation uh, has uh, uh, three times three matrix P. And uh, this is also three times three matrix gamma, uh, D gamma V. And th so these equations are described in terms of the fixed coordinate of R3 and matrices, three times three matrices. So at first, uh, at the first glance, we just have uh, something uh, like uh, uh, some equation just described in terms of R three, not uh, uh, not like uh, uh, no no. Uh, it, so this seems not to be uh, some equation on the manifold. However, when this uh, velocity is tangential on gamma, then we have this part. Uh, we see, we find that uh, this part can be written like this formula. And here, uh, delta H is a hot Laplacian, which is uh, acting on one form, so, but we uh, identify one form and vector fields. Here, we identify one form and vector fields. And this, this is a, a gradient of the divergence. And usually, in flat case, we also only have these two, two parts. But in case of curved surfaces, we have the curvature term here. And this, this is curvature. So our limit equations uh, can be written as uh, this form. And this is, uh, in fact, intrinsic, which means that uh, this, this, uh, this equation depends only on the first fundamental form of the surface. So uh, we, uh, as you know, this, this uh, uh, Gaussian curvature uh, is uh, intrinsic. Uh, uh, this is this is uh, uh, this is this is the Gauss theorem. Gauss theorem, and as uh, uh, as in the as, as in the theorem of Gauss, uh, this equation. Is uh, interesting. This is this is this fact is uh, uh, this fact. Uh, I think this fact is very surprising at least for me for the for the equations for the vector field. And in fact, our limit equations in the form in the intrinsic form agree with the Navier-Stokes equations on the abstract Riemannian manifold, which is introduced by Abi and Mars and Taylor. And uh, uh, such kind of uh, problem, uh, sorry, uh, this kind of uh, equations are studied by many researchers like this. And uh, in this talk, we uh, here we consider the two. Uh, here we consider two D surface, two D manifold gamma. But uh, in a in a higher dimensional case, this equation also can we we can also consider this kind of equation 
with uh, uh, by by replacing Gaussian curvature k just by the rich curvature. And in 2D case, of course, 2D case, this Gaussian curvature is equal to rich curvature. So in the higher dimensional case, we can uh, just by uh, we can consider this equation just by replacing this part by rich curvature. So th this is uh, uh, so th this fact is uh, I think this is also important point of our limit equations. And lastly, uh, let me uh, uh, explain. Uh, the difference of our limit equations and uh, limit equations derived by Temama and Tsiane in the case of Sophia. In 1997 paper, Temama and Tsiane studied the Navier-Stokes equations in a thin spherical shell, which is between, which is a region between the unit sphere and the sphere of radius one plus epsilon. Uh, of course, uh, this uh, curved thin domain. Uh, thin uh, spherical shell converges shrinks to unit sphere as epsilon goes to zero. And Temam and Siane consider the Navier Stokes equations uh, with Hodge boundary conditions like this. So the first condition is the same as ours, but the second condition is uh, different from ours. And then derived limit equations like, uh, uh, like, like our procedure as in our procedure, they derive the limit equations on the unit surface, and their limit equations are of this form here. And on the other hand, in our work under the three boundary condition here, our limit equations, NS0, uh, given in the uh, previous slide, on the, on the unit sphere with Gaussian coverage uh, identically equals to one, is of this form here. And here he has a difference to be uh, zero order term from the uh, Temam Tsiane's limit equations. And so this is a list of our uh, this is a list of uh, list of difference of the boundary conditions and the viscous viscous term in the uh, limit equations. And why uh, this kind of difference come, uh, appears? And the answer is as follows. The difference, this difference to B comes from the boundary condition of the original Navier Stokes, uh, sorry, original thin domain problem and the curvatures of the uh, and the curvatures of the curved thin domain. In fact, under the condition that the uh, vector field U epsilon is tangential on the boundary of the curved thin domain, we can show that the difference of the this boundary condition and this boundary condition here is twice the uh, uh, shape operator, uh, twice the u epsilon times shape operator on the boundary. Uh, the, this part, uh, uh, this part holds uh, always holds for the general uh, curved thin domains. And in particular, when the uh, when the curved thin domain is a spherical shell which has a boundary, uh, the unit sphere and the sphere of radius one plus epsilon. We have, we see that we have the, uh, we have that this part is equals to plus or minus of u epsilon, which uh, this uh, with the sign depending on the outer or inner boundaries. And uh, finally, we have that this bound, uh, the difference of boundary conditions is equals to plus or minus to, uh, to u epsilon on the boundary. And this difference to epsilon, to u epsilon, results finally results in the difference to v here, here in the limit two limit equations. So the uh, the one point the so uh, well, one point is uh, uh, in the thin field uh, thin domain problems, especially for the thin field limit, the boundary condition is very important in the form of limit equations. So this is just comment. And uh, oh, sorry, time is up. And uh, so I stop here and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Okay, are there any questions and comments? Thank you for your very beautiful and very rich talk. Are there any questions and comments? Uh, let me start one question. Uh, uh, what what <coughs> what kind of convergence uh, do you get from uh, uh, averaged tangential vector field to the limit tangential li limit uh, velocity? 
I, I get to just uh, in the in the theorem one here, I have uh, uh, something like lo local in time weak convergence in the L2 in time and H1 in space. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The, this is a convergence uh -huh. of the tangential component of the average mm -hmm. of uh, the strong solution, U epsilon. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and mm -hmm. for the normal component, we just have the global, uh, global in time, uh, global in time convergence uh, to mm -hmm. zero in this class. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and this is, uh, in, in this theorem one, we just have a weak, weak convergence, but uh, in fact, we can also show the strong convergence result uh, just follows from this energy, S, energy difference estimate. Uh -huh. yes, yes, so, yes, so we can okay. also show the strong convergence yeah. result. Do, 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 the, the, do you have uh, also uh, high convergence in higher derivatives or just uh, this uh, fast derivative? Do you have some control of higher derivatives? I think it may possible. It may be possible, but uh, we have to some. Uh, 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 of course, I I don't uh, I don't consider such a pro uh, such a problem. So I have to do something. I see. And uh, I I think it is it may be possible because this is something like energy estimate high energy estimate for the solution to the Navier-Stokes equations. But uh, in that case, we I think we need some derivatives of. Uh, Initial data here. Yeah. If we want to derive, uh, if we want to derive the uh, estimate for higher higher order derivatives of uh, solutions here. Okay, thank you. But, but basically, uh, the... I, I think it may possible. It may be possible uh -huh. to, uh, yeah, okay. to get something. Okay, thank you. Know? Yeah, I think there is a question by Professor Kuok Tonda Jia. Can I have, uh, okay, what is the boundary condition used by Tera or Abby Master? Maybe you, you have to, uh, you have to write, you have to take, you have to move to the page. To yes, and, uh, uh, and I, I have to, uh, I have to, uh, first, I have to, I have to explain that this equation is, uh, uh, I have to first uh, say that uh, this is a uh, uh, equation posed on a closed surface, not a thin domain. So basically, uh, basically in the uh, uh, in the uh, sorry uh, in, in this problem, there is no boundary condition uh, uh, <clears throat> in in our consideration. Uh -huh. uh, we consider boundary condition for the uh, thin domain problem. Which have the boundaries, of course, 3D1. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. here we consider the equations on the uh, closed surface gamma, closed manifold. So we have, we don't have any boundary conditions. And in fact, I, I remember that in the, in the study of Abby and Marston and Taylor, they also consider the uh, closed manifold. So they don't have any boundary condition. But of course, we can consider the boundary. Uh, if if the if the manifold has a boundary, then we can consider some some boundary conditions like no slip boundary conditions or the Neumann or uh, some other uh, slip boundary conditions. So, on. in so fact, okay. I so it's been that in your view, the the yeah, results yeah. by uh, Taylor is not contradicted with the the limit of Optimum and Zian, right? Uh, no, the uh, Taylor does not uh, connect. Uh, uh, sorry, the Taylor does not consider thin field limit. The uh, Taylor just considers the manifold without without considering thin domains. And they uh, he he post on uh, uh, he post the Navier-Stokes equations just uh, by considering the uh, something like the uh, con conservation laws or something. They, they, they don't, uh, he, 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 does, he didn't consider thin field limit. Okay, thank so you. So in other words, in other words, Terra, Ebian, Marston, or Terra derived this kind of equation by some principle, but they yes, do yes, not yes. study yes, yes, thin yes. film limit. Okay, uh, thank so you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Everything clear? Thank Are you. there any further questions? Thank you for your question. Are there any further questions? Uh, you can write the chat or unmute 
Okay, Daniel, please. from your conversions so that the average of v times the normal converges to zero yeah, yeah, yeah. so from this in sense you call basically the the, the vector v it's a tangential a tangential vector but it's rather in a weak sense satisfied is it right because you don't have this basically uh, point wise or you can say still can you conclude that v dot the normal derivative must be zero? Yes, or I think so. Ah, yes. Uh, in, in fact, we uh, we we show that uh, we we consider. Uh, in fact, we don't consider this space. We just consider the uh, space of a tangential vector field. Ah. So this is this is this is a cross to cross the subspace of original space here. I see. Okay, this yeah. I so, understand. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That was my question exactly. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions? I, I have one question about your main theorem. So yeah. the theorem, uh, the first page of your main theorem, this is the second page. Yes, yeah. The first page, okay, good. Uh, one more, yes. Uh, under suitable assumption gamma, what, what, what do you assume uh, on gamma? And u zero epsilon. Could you could you say, uh, for example, if if, if gamma is sub, if it, gamma is a sphere, what kind of assumption on u zero epsilon uh, is imposed? Okay, uh, let, let me uh, let, let me explain. Uh, not not detail, but some no no no, no detailed, detailed assumptions are very complicated. So let, let me say yeah, simple yeah. simple one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in yeah. the case, uh, we assume that uh, basically two cases. One case is uh, gamma is not rotationally symmetric, uh, mm -hmm. which means that gamma, gamma is uh, not, not like Sophia or a toroidal surface, mm -hmm. which is not 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 rotationally symmetric around any any axis. In that case, uh -huh. we, we can we we can that consider any it. kind of initial data u epsilon zero, uh, just uh -huh. a solenoidal one. And in the mm -hmm. in the second case, we assume that we uh, we assume that uh, gamma uh, surface is rotationally symmetric, like Sophia and the toroidal surface. In that case, we as we have to assume that this uh, this uh, initial velocity field is uh, is orthogonal. Aha. Uh -huh to su such rotational vector fields which uh -huh. gives a uh, which which is uh, which gives a rotation of the sorry which which gives a rotation of the uh, uh, mm -hmm. surface gamma mm -hmm. uh, be mm -hmm. because uh, in that in this case this kind of rotational vector fields uh, more precisely this is this is uh, something like a times x plus b this yeah. kind of vector fields as a stationary solution to the Navier-Stokes equations, uh -huh. if if the if the surface and uh, if the surface and uh, thin domain are rotationally symmetric, mm -hmm. it's a perfect <laughs> slip boundary case, a, a perfect slip uh, boundary <laughs> condition case. So uh, have to exclude this kind of uh, this kind of uh, uh, stationary mm -hmm. solutions. Uh, mm -hmm. Without without uh, without external force, so we uh, because the, uh, in fact this this kind of vector field does not dis dissipate in viscosity, oh. so this is uh -huh. very pro problematic. Mm -hmm. So we we have to assume that this uh, initial velocity mm -hmm. is uh, orthogonal to this kind of uh, uh, vector fields, rotational vector fields, in order to get the dissipation for the actual solution. U epsilon. So this, uh -huh. uh, roughly speaking, this this is the assumption yeah, for yeah, the gamma and the epsilon zero. Okay. Yeah. So you you should avoid some stationary solution, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Great. Okay. Uh, I think there are no further questions. So I would ra would like to thank speaker. Thank you very much, Tatsuhiko Mura. And uh, uh, we you. will have a coffee break uh, from three. Uh, from from. Uh, in the time of Japan, it's two, but in Australia, it's four, I think, right? Right, so, but in a few minutes, in three minutes, basically. Yeah, okay, three minutes. Okay, and the room is different.
and it is announced in uh, in uh, in a uh, most recent message from Sydney. Yeah, thank yes, you very please. much. Okay. Thank you, okay. uh, Professor Giga. So just to, to add on what Professor Giga said, you will find everyone is invited to join the coffee break. You will find the link to the coffee break in the reminder email of the Zoom, uh, from Zoom, which reminded you to use this uh, seminar. And mm -hmm. uh, it is at the bottom of this reminder email. Okay, I hope to okay. see you there in a few minutes. And yes, thank I you. Thank you, Professor uh, Miura. Tatsuhiko Miura. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.